another Coffee with Chris virtually. Uh, Coach Chris Lowry, thank you so much for joining me once again. Um, it's been a little while. Things have happened. I mean, we're still in a COVID world, but practices have started for you. So, so how's it going, Coach? It's going good. You know, obviously, we're everything, you know, regarding the COVID situation and how we're preparing and how we're doing things differently um, has changed our approach. But the good thing about it is uh, we're able to work in small groups with so many newcomers. That's been really helpful in helping teach them some things and nuances about um, offense and defensively, the things that, that we got to get better at. So I guess my first question is, how are practices set up now? Uh, how many guys can you have in at once? And what are the, all the types of drills that you go through in this type of thing? Well, the big thing is that you can no more than five right now. So most of our groups are four and we have uh, one five group. Uh, so, you know, usually with a couple guards, a couple bigs, you know, kind of trying to be able to do things, um, separating them initially in the start of workouts and then combining them to do some combo work action um, as the workout progresses. So um, the biggest thing is that it's a lot of teaching, a lot of talking. Um, a lot of high energy, which is always good. And um, so that's been the beauty of, of our guys is that um, the preparation is different, but the effort has really been high. That's really good to hear. And then, I mean, one more thing related to COVID, I guess, do they have to wear masks in practice? I guess we've seen videos of guys wearing masks. Is that all practice throughout? Uh, yeah, ah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's different because at times they'll complain about not being able to breathe and Mm -hmm. you know, we're just trying to make sure that we, we have the safest and best environment for them to work and get better, but also um, not, not, you know, put each other in, a, in, in harm's way as far as the virus is concerned. And our guys have tested, so that's been the good thing about it. And for, the, for, the, for this time since we've been back, we've been negative, and that's, that's great, um, considering that, you know, um, it, you, you, can, you can get it just as easily of meeting somebody and talking to them five minutes, but we've been really diligent in our effort about wearing masks everywhere you go. And, um, and anytime you need to go do anything, you have to have a mask on, whether it's with us in workouts, uh, mask when they're lifting weights so, or mask when they're ordering food or whatever, they have to, we have to make sure they understand in order for us to have a season, they have to be masked up. And then I guess, I mean, first thing I want to get into about specific guys, let's talk about the newcomers. I mean, what are the guys looking like that are just coming in, Nigel and, and the rest of the gang that are coming in in practice? I think, obviously, everybody's excited about that group, knowing the potential of, the, of, them, of them as individuals and also as a, as a group in, in itself. And, um, you know, we just they, – they've got energy. and They've got excitement. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the biggest thing that you want your newcomers – I don't want them to work and these guys haven't and that's that's been great they've been committed to doing the work and working hard working the right way and and that that is that is good because um you know they know where we finished last week last year so do we and the commitment that that's that's seen throughout our entire group and has been very high and understanding that that's not where we want to be at and that's not where where k-state deserves to be at so you know, we've worked really, really hard getting them to understand that where it is, where it has to be, and where it has to go. What are, uh, is there any of newcomers that have surprised you uh, coming in about, you know, some of the maybe athleticism or different things that you didn't know they had a part of their game specifically, or has it all been pretty much the same? Well, I think the biggest thing is the IQ being able to tell guys something once. Uh, with this group is is really good being able to just say hey do this and then understand uh, what that means basketball wise uh, is really good what's the strength and conditioning been like is it is it pretty much the same as last year or is it just a few guys working out at once how's that work I think we've attacked the, the weight room um, you know I think that Ben is really excited about getting this group to his athletic peak Mm -hmm. And trying to make sure that that they have positive, excuse me, increments in their in their progression in the short period of time we're going to have them, uh, but it has to be positive and it has to be trending upward in their in their physicality and their athleticism, and also their strength. And then Davion, I mean, I think 
I want to talk about him specifically because he's already a guy that has a great frame for a big guy. Um, how's he come along? I mean, it's already still very new and stuff like that. But how's his strength and conditioning coming along so far? Well, I think we had guys come in with bodies. When you look at yeah. – obviously, Selton is very strong. Um, and you look at Rudy and you look at Siri and you look at Davion. Uh, obviously, you would say Luke needs it. Get, you know, he's thin. But the, the strong one has really been Nigel. He's very put together. Um, he's, he's really strong. And, uh, you know, he's obviously done some, some weight work. So those guys still are, are babies. And we're still chipping, chipping at the rough edge just trying to, to make them a whole product. But um, they, they're worker bees. And that's what, what you like about them is that um, they come in, they want more, they want to be coached. They're not running from it. And um, they, they made it fun. Just take me through all the newcomers, Coach. Um, from Nigel all the way to Carlton. And, and I know you spoke about some of them, but specifically each one about what they do well on the court like, from what you've seen. I think, when, you know, we'll just start in groups. We started the guards. You started Nigel. Nigel's a skilled PG, um, you know, at the excitement. Everybody knows what he did last year in the AAU circuit. And obviously, you know, being up for Mr. Basketball in Indiana and being an All-Stater and, um, you know, his talent levels, obviously, for a little guy is very high. But I, I think that he can do a lot of other things that we're going to bring out in him, you know, too. We think he can be a high-end defender as well. Uh, and and he, he just is rock solid. His approach to everything is the same. He's not – doesn't get shaken up about anything. He doesn't – if he doesn't know something, he asks, and then he does it exactly the way it should be done that very next time. So – I mean, he's a, he, he, he's, a, he's a guy you can get excited about just by watching shoot the basketball. And then I guess next, let's talk about Luke. Luke, Luke is a guy we've known a long time. Obviously, throughout the recruiting process, we targeted him. And, and you know, he's come into the program as a, as a guy who loves to work. Mm -hmm. you know, he loves to work on his game. He's always – he wants to be in the gym. You know, if you, he's got a bunch of videos out when he was in high school. You know, he's always working out with his trainer. So, so those are the things you like to see in, 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 in guys that you recruit. Is they love being in the gym. And, and he's a guy who loves being in the gym. And Selton Miguel, I mean, obviously one of my faves. <laughs> Selton will be a lot of people's favorites just yeah. for the simple fact that sometimes things look hard and he makes them easy. You know, he, he can score the basketball. I think that's the easiest way to describe him is that he's, he's highly competitive about everything, and he's a, he's a scorer. He has that mentality to make plays. And um, so, you know, his, his version of himself changes every day because he's going to tell you how good he is and what he can do, <laughs> you know, when you watch him play. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, he showed that in high school. Um, and then uh, let's talk about – uh, Rudy, Rudy. Well, Ru Rudell was pretty good. He's he's a he's a guy that is he shoots the ball at a high clip. He shoots it. Um, he's competitive. He's he's fun to be around. He's he 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 makes me laugh. You know, he's he's a charming guy in his own words. He's you know so. He's one of those dudes that, that people flock to just because he's going to be smiling and he's going to talk to everybody in the room, in the building. Um, he's extremely likable. He's a great teammate. Um, obviously, there's going to be some transition from junior college to, to our level. But um, I think the biggest thing with him is he's a leader. And the leadership side of what he's bringing and how he works have been great improvements. And uh, let's talk – I guess, is that all the guards, newcoming guards, or am I missing one? Yeah, that's it. The that's three it. Guards well, let's, and Rudy. let's talk about Davion, then. Let's start with Davion moving down. Davion, he's, he's huge. Um, you know, the biggest thing with him, we didn't know if he, if he could – would be a guy who could sustain work. You know, sometimes big guys are guys that can work work hard and then shut it down. Work hard and shut it down. Uh, um, he touched down on campus, willing to work and get better and to get stronger. And uh, he wanted more. And you know, for a big 
you know, was, you know almost seven foot, 265 pound dude. Um, the first time we ran a mile, he ran a seven minute mile. Then he dropped it to 6.30 the very next time. So what I'm saying is that's, that's moving for a big guy. Uh, and to drop 30 seconds uh, within a week is really good. And that's, I think he has a strong will. And I think he wants to get better and he wants to get coached. So th those are the things that make you excited about him is he's wanting to get better and he wants to be coached. And then um, someone I think people are curious about learning more about, Siri Lewis. Um, what does he bring to the table? Well, I think the funny thing is, you know, Coach Korn, who left our staff as head coach at SEMO, said, what is he, about six, seven and a half? And I said, no, he's probably close to six, nine. So he actually has grown. So that's the, that's the biggest thing. The number one thing with him, he's, yeah, he's grown. and He's closer to six, nine than he is six, seven. So. That was a positive, you know, when you, when you, it's the, you know, they talk about the airport, the airport change, the guys change sizes when they, when they step off the plane, they're supposed to be seven foot and they're six, nine, but he stepped off and he was taller. So, you know, they were like, Oh, okay. This is a good thing. Uh, but I think with Siri high in motor and he's a freak athlete, he, he's going to, he's, he can cause a lot of disruption with his activity. Um, he's, he's, he's very quick off his feet. He has great feet and he's very athletic. Um, and he's already, you know, at 230 pounds. So, you know, incoming true freshman, uh, with that size and athleticism, you know, those things appeal to, to, to how we play. And so him, he's got to continue to learn how to play and continue to get better, uh, put things together, but I mean, his, his immeasurables and his, and his, and his physicality are, are there for a young kid. And then a guy who might not have the, the um, physicality in his game yet, maybe he does, but you talked about his skill. Talk about Carlton Lingard and what he brings to the table. Well, what he's shown right now is that he's an efficient shooter mm -hmm. from the mid range and the three. Now he's got to, you know, obviously his motor's got to get better um, as far as how to play and exist in a high major program. But the consistency is, um, he's shot and he, he's really shot the ball well yeah. up to this point. And obviously when you can shoot the ball well and you've got that length, that's a weapon. And, you know, we're going to use his talents and, and make sure that he understands how to, how to exist in a program. So, you know, that's the, that's the biggest thing and that he's got to get better at, but his talent um, and, and where he can get, and he's got three years of eligibility. So we're, we're, excited about and then I guess the last one I want to ask about uh, specifically what you think he's going to do on the floor is is Casey Eziaga what's he going to be doing on the floor well the big easy is a guy that we're excited about he's 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 ripped up man he you know you know you just you know you, when guys you see a guy like that you go like ooh, hope he doesn't look like Tarzan play like Jane you know, <laughs> that old thing that a guy who looks great can't can't play at all. That's that's not that's not who we think yep. he is. You know, he's got the physicality and he's got the offensive tools mm -hmm. to be a factor. He can go over either shoulder. He's got a nice face up game. Um, he can run the floor. He can block shots. He can hedge ball screens. So all the things you want in your big guy, he can do. Now it's time. Now he's he's going to have the opportunity to do them. And then I want to transition, you know, to the returning players. Uh, I want to ask about Mike and how has he taken a, a, a step up as being that senior guy and uh, has he been that leader for the team? Well, I think that's the one thing you, he has to provide for us. Um, he's the oldest player here. He's the only player, you know, from the championship and the Elite Eight. So what he says has to mean something to our guys. And I think that that's been uh, the good thing is that he's approached this thing the right way and that leadership first is the most important thing from him to our, to our players and our team and obviously getting better as a player. And if you watch at the end, he did. He was, he was turning a corner. He was getting better. And that's, that's, uh, that's something that, that we are going to expect and command from him as a senior that's been through the Big 12. This will be your fourth time. Yeah. So understanding how tough the league is and understanding what you have to do to be successful, he knows that. 
And then I guess I mean, we, uh, I want to also ask about Montavious. I've heard about him gaining weight. Is that true? Some good weight for Montavious? Well, he's, he's big. He's a physical yeah. specimen. Monty is a, you know, if he doesn't get hurt the first time, we feel that our season is different. It's because we, we got derailed when he went down. The things that he provides for us and his IQ defensively as a freshman last year was very, very high. And he knew where to be at, at stuff, uh, certain, certain spots on the floor where I need to be to be successful and to be a good teammate on that side of the ball. He had that already. And so now we're just trying to make sure he continues to build his offensive game and he continues to, to grow um, through his past in injuries from last year. And then touch on Dejuan, uh one more time about, you know, what he's been able to do this summer. I think Dejuan was a guy who was in and out of the lineup and – what he got last year was a lesson, you know, and, and this level, this level is unforgiving. You know, this level doesn't care if you're a freshman or not. And him learning how you have to be consistent, and that doesn't mean scoring the ball. Um, being a consistent player means showing up and, and competing every single day, whether you score, whether you make positive plays on the offensive end, you have to be just as consistent on the defensive end. Oh. And, uh, you know, he's obviously worked with his body. He's gained weight. Uh, he's made a commitment to the weight room, and that should trans transition into his game becoming where we thought it could get to um, after seeing what he could do as a freshman. So, you know, obviously he's a returning player. He's a returning guy we expect a lot from. Uh, but we also know that he's got to continue to grow, too, as a player. I mean, Dave Juan and Montavious, obviously, the, those two coming in last year, they showed a lot of great things out on the floor. And now this year going to have to come in and uh, be leaders along with Mike and some other guys. Uh, what do you see from, from the, the returning guys so far? Well, obviously, you know, you see guys that didn't like how last year finished. You know, obviously he won two of the last two games and we're playing better. But, you know, the, the season as a whole was, was not – what we, where we anticipated or what they anticipated. And, and that, was a, that was a high frustration level as, as far as we were concerned because you had um, several guys coming back to the system that knew the system that could execute it and it did get done. So that was a frustrating part in itself. But, um, you know, understanding that it has to get better and wanting to put the work in to, to, to get better. Um, sometimes, you know, when you, when, you, when you haven't been as good, you don't know how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. and you don't know what what else to do to get out of it what they've done is listen and, and, and really you know just learning how to trust us because we were winning before they got before they got here we lost when they got here now it's complete trust of coach has how do we get it back mm -hmm. and that's those are the questions that you need to have from guys like that returning when you're trying to get your program back to where it needs to go so obviously last season, yep, it wasn't the season you wanted to see, but you had those scores that are now leaving. Do you see Dejuan and Montavious and Mike taking a step up and being able to, along with the newcomers, being able to uh, make sure they score the ball efficiently? Because that was a struggle also last year for guys like Cardi and um, X at times when, when they didn't have the game going. Well, I think some of it is that, number one, we, we have to help them learn how to be more efficient and then taking the right shots that make you become efficient. That's part of it, too. And, yeah. I, and I think that learning how to be a patient scorer is something we've really talked about, these guys. The panic of, of you know, oh, I got to shoot it, or oh, I got to do this. You, know, you just got to relax and understand that, um, you know, we have to have energy, and ball finds energy. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of our approach with them is that you have to play very hard. Um, and that's what, when we've been successful, we play very hard. And offensively, we've gotten better because of that. And the, this group, this is a group of kids that came in with a lot of offensive firepower and our, the guys we recruited. And, and we know that. But it's also a, a returning group of guys who've been through the fire. So you have to, we have to combine that and make sure they both understand that this is a team. Um, and, and we have to get better together. And, and that's the approach uh, that we've had. And they've been great. They've been great teammates. And that's the one thing that, um, there's, there's a lot of things we promoted and talked about with these guys this summer, 
but none of it was being a good teammate to each other. So that was something that we were we were very glad that clicked and happened right away and made sure that 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 we talk, talked about guys, you, you guys are doing a great job helping each other. Um and and really it's it's okay to 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 see your teammate have success. Mm -hmm. It's okay, be happy with that. And and sometimes you want to be good yourself that you're disappointed when you don't play and it affects everything else. Mm -hmm. And we've just tried to show them and convince them of, of playing well. You can play well and not play well. You know, and that's, that's something that, you know, that's what winners do. They don't have their best, but they can still win. And, and learning from winning um, is, is key. With a, a lot of new guys and a new group, I, I want to ask a couple weeks into practice, I, I'm assuming you might say it's a long ways out, but, do you have an idea maybe of uh, who you might think might fit in the starting lineup or is it still something that's still so far away though? I mean, we haven't had them together. I mean, at all. So, yeah. And we, you know, we, we can't play them against each other mm -hmm. at all. So it has to be drills and it has to be things that are IQ stuff and needs. And, and we had to learn, start from that standpoint alone first. And, you know, you obviously you don't want a pandemic to make you change the way you're doing things, but it actually helped us in the standpoint that we're, we're really slowed down and teaching at a high clip and making sure they understand why you're doing it. Sometimes in a program, you just do stuff this way and you don't explain it because it works. You know, you say, I got to trust them. Now we show them why it works and we show them how it works and having the ability to do that uh, has been, has been good for them. Um, because the worst thing you can have is a kid who's got slow feet because he's thinking mm -hmm. and his mind is focused on why I'm doing it instead of being a natural reactor and just hooping. So um, we're getting all that out of the way right now mm -hmm. as far as the, the, you know, having cobwebs in your head, not knowing how to do stuff and how do I do it? You know, that's, that's been the good thing. The coach has been great as far as that is concerned. A few more guys I want to ask you about. Um, Casey Iziagu. I mean, I, I keep hearing him. I mean, we already saw he was physically looked ready when he was sitting on the bench, but unable to play last season. What's it been like this summer for him? The Big Easy. I mean, it's easy. <laughs> you know, everybody can't say his name, so the Big Easy. It's a, that's a real easy way to I love Casey. It. You know, so he he is a guy who you can throw the ball to, and you know he commands. He'll command help on his catches, which means double teams and. You know, and that's something that we haven't had, uh, obviously, in the past year. You know, Dean Wade presented different problems. But when you guys like, you know, Thomas Gibson and DJ um, Johnson, they commanded you send another guy or they're going to score on you. Mm -hmm. And Casey has that same uh, physical physicalness to his game, but he is his touch is very, very good. So I think that – and he's bigger than both of those guys. So yeah. uh, we expect – we're expecting things from him. He knows that. Um, but yet, still, he's still learning. So, um, to be a wildcat. And that's the good thing about it is he's a hard worker. I mean, you can tell by his, what his body looks like that he does work very hard on his fitness and conditioning. Um, he's a great teammate, great human being. We, we just expect um, him to command a presence. Uh, and, and that's where he is right now. And that's what he's working on every day. Mm -hmm. And the last guy I'm curious about is uh, one of the guys that came in later in the 2020 class, Carlton Lingard, um, obviously coming in thinner, but what's it been like for him this summer? Well, he's, we've posted pictures of him in our group text to the players every week. His, mm -hmm. End of his week, he'll do a muscle pose. And it's, we, <laughs> you know, we laugh at him, but obviously the last two weeks he's shown significant uh, strength gains. And, and that was a major problem for him coming in. It wasn't was he skilled enough or athletic enough. You know, the one thing we didn't know, he has great feet. You know, he can really move. Um, you know, he just needs to continue to get stronger. And he's got range to the three-point line. His touch is feathery. He can really shoot the basketball. So mm -hmm. we're just – he's got to learn the difference between junior college basketball and high major basketball. That's and, – and that happens when you make that transition. And – he didn't go back into his second year of junior college basketball. He came right in as he was a qualifier out of high school. Exactly. So I think, I think that, I mean, that's all the guys I think I've been mostly curious about. You talked about Nigel, Selton, Siri, and all those other guys. Um, I guess, but 
I guess one thing I do want to ask, though, has, has Nigel and Rudy, have they, the, those are the two point guards, have they shown those point guard abilities that, that make you think they're going to be able to be the guys handling the basketball? Well, I think with, with, with Nigel, he's coming from Indiana, where, you know, he's been taught. You know, mm-hmm. you know, he's, you know, I'm from Indiana. You always brag about learning how to play when you're a baby. And, and okay. he, he really understands how to play the game. Uh, and obviously he can make – he can sh- – Rudy is the is the, is the, is a guy who's um, he he everybody's gonna love this guy. Number one, <laughs> you know he's got a infectious personality. Um, he's a worker. He's a question. He asks questions. He constantly is is wanting to know how what he has to do to get better, which are all traits you want out of any player. Um, but you know we knew he 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 could score. We didn't know he could shoot it. How he's shooting it right mm-hmm. now. Uh, so at that spot, those two guys are really shooting the basketball, and that's something that we we you know we we hope is a big part of who we become is is becoming a better shooting team, and uh, those two are definitely a start with that as far as shooting the basketball. Speaking of that, um, I've heard good things about Luke Kazuki's shot too in practice. Is that true? Well, Luke is Luke's more than a shooter, and he'll tell you he. You know he 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 doesn't want to be put in a box and say I'm only this. Nope. Uh, he can do some other things. I think that's one thing that you know. Obviously, you know I've seen him a long time, and I think other guys on our staff maybe didn't know what he could do. Um, just thinking that what his press press clippings say. But um, if you've seen and watched him, he has a ball in his hands a lot, and he's bouncing it, and um, he can make plays for other people. Meaning that. He's not going to shake you, but he's a ball mover, and he won't hold the ball when he should be moving it. And then, you know, obviously, when he gets going, he can make a shot. You know, he can yeah. he can make shots from all over, and that's what's impressive about him is his ability to uh, make different kinds of shots. And he's a better athlete than, than people give him credit for. So now let's move on. I want to talk about what's it been like to see Shane out there on the practice court coaching it up <laughs> oh man you know that's it's very it's something like seeing somebody you help raise <laughs> grow up you know what I mean yeah. and now all of a sudden he's right beside you and Shane's been in the trenches with us before as a player and as a GA and now he's you know he's officially a grown-up officially a, a full-time basketball coach on this level and you know Shane is the guy who, who's obviously has a high IQ Mm-hmm. for the game and really understands the game um and he's he's at that age where um he, he he understands and he gets these guys and that's important for excuse me any staff is to have you know some somebody that's relatable to them not only in age but in the things they like and Shane obviously is that guy for us along with being a good player and a, and a good basketball mind to to go as well and seeing knowing that he's completely separated from being a player to a coach and that's the that's the that's the hardest thing when you're a young coach is 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 the fine line between okay I want these guys to you know understand that I'm still in there you know doing some of the same things they are but I am also not their their peer anymore I'm 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 you know I'm a guy who's going to coach them hard and I'm, a, I'm somebody who they can still come to and talk to. I know with uh, COVID going on, it can be a little tough, but has any of his teammates stopped in or, or former players uh, stopped in recently? Um, you know, obviously you have J.O. here. That's a big part of it. But, you know, obviously uh, a couple of weeks ago that I know for a fact they were all together was Shane, Will, Nino, Gip, J.O., <laughs> Jamar Samuels, Wally, uh, Judge. So yep. that's the that's the beauty of this is man happiness, man. They they return. If you build it, they will come. They come back, man, and this this place is special for that. Well, and if Rodney and Wesley didn't have to be in that bubble, they might have showed up too. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, Barry Brown also came back too. Barry's been back, DJ Johnson. So we've had so many guys in town, and it's made it so difficult to try and see them and be safe but you know obviously you can't you can't pass up seeing good players and and that's your family absolutely um so obviously about naming names and stuff how how different 
has uh, recruiting changed this summer compared to last summer's? Well, we can't be out. So that's the yeah. that's biggest thing. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, I messed with my wife, and that's like the first time since 97 uh, that I haven't been out recruiting. Yeah. If you can believe. I mean, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a longer than some of my guys I've coached that most, all of them actually been you know, alive. So um, that's the difference, not being gone and, and um, seeing, getting in the, you know, the hotels and the rental cars, forgetting what your rental car looks like because you're in a different one the day, mm -hmm. day before and uh, forgetting what your room number was, like all stuff was gone. but what it made us do is focus on watching guys on film and, um, you know, and, and going back to get to people's huddles and watch high school events and high school games, uh, which was kind of how I was brought up in the game anyway, when you brought up watching a lot of film because there wasn't YouTube or internet, you had to get, you know, VHS cassettes to watch film. You couldn't email somebody your whole games. You know, you had that, or you couldn't stream anything live at that time. And mm -hmm. um, it takes it back to that era when you just had to watch, watch tape and really play by ear, listen to people who were there. And, mm -hmm. and as far as AAU coaches, high school coaches, um, um, you know, recruiting subscription people and, you know, just listening to guys and trusting guys that you've known for a long time. This is just one more question I have on recruiting that I don't think I've asked before, but I've been curious is like, when does it feel like the right time for you to, you know, take your recruits and introduce them to the whole staff? Or is that something that happens right away usually with a guy that you're really interested in? Well, now it's had to happen now because of Zoom. Yeah. Normally you work a guy, work a guy, and they may, you may, you know, hey guys, you may send out his number to the rest of the staff, hit this guy up, you know, after you've actually worked him. Um, now with Zoom going on and you recruiting younger players earlier, um, you're Zooming with your whole staff, so they get a chance to meet everybody and see what everybody looks like right away. And and that's the the that is the good part about obviously this this, but the bad is they can't come on your campus. They yeah. can't you know they can't do unofficials. They can't. Mm -hmm. That's how people usually meet the staff on unofficial or official visits. Um, in person so we, we not been able to do that uh, but the zoom calls um, and the zoom meetings is at an all-time high <laughs> yeah <laughs> across the country high. with college coaches and kids and they're important as ever but how much different are they really obviously I mean it's way more personal when you get to get the guy on campus how much different are they than than a normal summer for you well I think you you you're shooting your shot on the zooms, not knowing if you, when, if they're ever going to visit number one mm -hmm. and, and two, um, if they're serious or not, you will know right away after a zoom yeah. as opposed to a longer process, they'll string it out because you don't actually get to get in front of them. And, yep. you know, like you, like you can now right away, you know, you'll know uh, within a day or two or instantly how serious you know people are with you after a zoom because they might not have known, what your staff makeup is. They might not have known who was on staff. They might have said, oh, weren't you somewhere else? They might have recognized them. And, you know, so those those things are, are helpful in the Zooms right away. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the interaction on your campus is, uh, you can't replace that for the simple fact that you go somewhere, Bruce Weber in Manhattan, everybody recognizes the, the celebrity side of a recruit being with Mm -hmm. your recruit, your players and everybody recognize and everybody know them at the football game and being able to, to just feel the love from our fan base is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's strictly social media then where they can say stuff on Twitter about them or follow them. Um, you and I both know that there's times when our guys will be at a football game and a recruits mm -hmm. the town and Twitter just erupts with follow this guy. And all of a sudden he may get, 300 followers within an hour because of the official visit or the unofficial visit. And that's what it's about. That's what you miss. Mm -hmm. And that's what we miss. You know, we love football Saturdays, man. They're the best. And, and to be able to, to tailgate and hang out and be on the sidelines, be in the stands, uh, it's something that we definitely hope we can get back to. Um, but you, we have to have our mask right now to, to hopefully get, get to that point.
are we going to see football? We were both big football fans. Are we going to oh, see man, football? I, football <laughs> I, I, know. I hope so. Oof. I hope so. Me too. Um, I guess last thing I want to do, just uh, in a quick consensus way, like give me like a, a, a week from Monday through Friday for you coaches and, and on what it's set up like now. Oh, a week, you know, Monday, probably Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, weights are early. So it's there, it's AM, you know, in the six thirty the first group it hits. So, you know, you have that and you have, you know, three three groups, you know, six thirty, seven thirty, eight thirty, um, weights, and then you come back in the evening, well the early afternoon and, and have individual workouts within those groups. Yep. So, you know, you have some time for them to do, you know, if they're do school work or whatever online, which is where it's at now because of obviously COVID and um, then you then you you do your individual workouts with the staff, and that's you know it, it, you know we just we do you know fifty minutes each, um, three you know so now you 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 it's about, it's a three hour time frame, and then they go to dinner, and then they have their hour blocks at night to just shoot for an hour without the coaching staff um, present, and just get some shots up and um, work at it. So that's kind of <laughs> what they do. Uh, that they've done Monday, Monday through Friday. Um, and obviously run the mile in the mornings. Um, so, you know, that's, that's something that they probably hate is, <laughs> is the, the preparation of the senior se- season is here, but we don't know. Yeah. So the, the, the not know, it kind of weighs heavy on you because you don't want to feel like you're preparing for nothing. Absolutely. And, and, and that's where we've been really creative in our stuff. And we've really, really um, gotten them to believe, hey, no matter what, this is good for us to prepare. Mm-hmm. And, and so they, they've not responded in a way that you'll be like, eh, we don't know. So we're going we're gonna to approach it that way. They've been, they've been really um, locked in and really um, excited about the season. Because think about it, we were locked up for so long. Anytime you get to touch a ball now is, is a – is a value. So yeah. those guys have been chomping at the bit, you know, to get here and then to get on the court and to get in the weight room. So they, they have not acted like they were tired of it. Good. They've, they've been, you know, extremely excited every time they get a chance to get back in the gym. Well, I hope as much as you guys and everyone else that the basketball season gets played, the football season gets played and, uh, Maybe we can get back to normal at some point, but thank you, Coach, for updating the fans and, and me on everything going on this summer. Oh, thanks. And obviously, you know, well, we, these are fun, and I know our fans like these, and, you know, you want to do as many as possible, and it's just we got to get back to doing it. It's just like anything else. We we, we got to try to find our, our normalcy, and this is the new normal now, and um, just dealing with that, but you know, we, uh, we, we're excited about football season coming up, obviously, and yep. to see where our guys are. And, you know, I'm a huge Notre Dame fan, too, so you know I'm excited <laughs> about them. And, uh, you know, we're gonna, the cats are going to just keep working at it. Next time I see you, you got to hook me up with one of those cats' masks. I think those things are sweet. Nice. They are big time. They are big time. <laughs> All right, Coach. Till next time, we appreciate you. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks, Flando.